Lesson 6.3, Fractions in Simplest Form. This is also called Reducing or Reducing Fractions. It's very important that you saw video 6.1 and 6.2 because you really might become confused. They're linked in the description. We can write a fraction as an equivalent fraction in simplest form. A fraction is in simplest form when we can represent it using as few equal parts of a whole as possible. To write equivalent fractions in simplest form, we can use a model. 2 fourths is equal to 1 half. We have a circle split into fourths. If we have two of them, it's the same thing as half the circle. We can also use common factors with division. We have 5 tenths. 5 and 10 have 5 as a common factor. We do division. 5 divided by 5 is equal to 1. And 10 divided by 5 is equal to 2. 5 tenths is equal to 1 half. And writing a fraction in its simplest form is also referred to as reducing the fraction. And reduce means to make less or bring down. We will know a fraction is in simplest form when the only common factor for the numerator and denominator is 1. We have 4 sixteenths. We write the factors for 4. 1 times 4 and 2 times 2, so we have a 1, 2, and 4. We write the factors for 16. That would be 1 times 16, 2 times 8, or 4 times 4. So the common factors here would be a 1, 2, and 4, and we divide by the greatest common factor, 4. 4 divided by 4 is a 1. 16 divided by 4 is a 4. We have 1 fourth. And we can make sure that it's in its simplest form by writing the factors for 1, that would just be 1 times 1, and the factors for 4, a 1, a 2, and a 4. And the only common factor they have is a 1, so yes, it's in its simplest form. And the cat says, 1 fourth is in its simplest form because the only factor 1 and 4 have in common is 1. And if you don't understand factors, go back to video 5.1 and 5.3 that are linked in the description, and it'll explain factors to you. By finding and using the greatest common factor, we can find the simplest form faster and do less math. We have 4 sixteenths. Well, they have the common factors 1 and 2. So if we didn't use the 4 and we used the 2, then we would divide the 4 by 2, and we'd get a 2. We'd divide the 16 by 2 and get an 8. Ah, but by not using the greatest common factor, that 4, we need to divide again. The 2 and the 8 have the factor 2 in common, so we can divide 2 by 2 and get a 1, and 8 divided by 2 is a 4. Now we've got it in its simplest form, but we had to divide twice because we didn't use the greatest common factor. If we divide it by 4, we just only divide once. We get 1 fourth, and even the goat says he'd rather divide once. Three people can equally share a pizza if it's cut into sixths or thirds. Each person would get two sixths. Here, each person would get a third. If we divide two sixths, the numerator and denominator both by two, because that's the common factors for a two and a six, we get one third. Two sixths is equal to one third. We can represent two-sixths as one-third. Sixths of a pizza are cut into smaller slices than thirds, so there are more slices. And thirds of a pizza are cut into larger slices than sixths, so there are fewer slices. And they are equivalent fractions because they both represent the same amount. A fraction is in its simplest form when we can write it with the fewest equal parts of a whole as possible. If we can't write it with fewer parts, then the fraction cannot be simplified. 
Here we have a circle split into eight equal parts, and two of the eight parts are shaded. That's two eighths that are shaded. We have a circle split into four parts, and we can see where the eighths would have been with the dotted lines, and one of the four parts is shaded. Two eighths is equal to one fourth. See how the numerator is a one? That's a unit fraction because the numerator is a one, and all unit fractions with one as a numerator are in their simplest form. We can do two eighths divided by two for the numerator and denominator, the same number, and two divided by two is equal to one, eight divided by two is equal to four, we have one fourth. Two eighths in its simplest form is one fourth. Now look at these fraction models. Here we have one whole, we have half, we have two-fourths, three-sixths, four-eighths, five-tenths, and six one-twelfth pieces. The parts are, this is in one part, this is in two parts, this is three, see, one, two, three. This is in four parts, because there's four of them. This is in five parts, because there's five of them. And this is in six parts, because there's six of them. And they're all the same length as the half. One half is equal to two fourths, which is also equal to three sixths, which is also equal to four eighths and five tenths and six twelfths. And the fraction with the least amount of parts is the fraction in the simplest form. This only has one part. So one half is the fraction in simplest form because its numerator is least. They are all the same length. They are, these are all equivalent to each other. Three six is the same thing as one half, but one half only has one part. See that? So that's in simplest form. Here we have a fraction model of one whole, and here we have a half. That's half of this red one up here, and this is in one part, and this is in two parts, and this is in four parts. And two-fourths, these two yellow one-fourth pieces is two-fourths, it's in a simpler form than these eighth pieces because it has fewer parts than the four-eighths. But it's not in simplest form. So this is simpler, but it's not simplest because the numerator and denominator still have a two as a common factor. Four-eighths divided by two 4 divided by 2 is 2, 8 divided by 2 is 4, so we went from 4 eighths to this 2 fourths. But we can divide them by 2 again and get 1 half. We had to do division twice. Dividing by the greatest common factor in the beginning, we find the simplest form faster and divide one time instead of using two times. If we had divided by 4 here, we would have only done it once. We would have had one half. By not dividing by the greatest common factor, we created extra work for ourselves and had to do the division again. So be careful. We may write a fraction in a simpler form, but it might not be the simplest form. And we will know it is in simplest form when the only common factor for both the numerator and denominator is one. A student needed to write eight twelfths in simplest form and wrote four sixths. Well, we have eight twelfths. If we divide the numerator by two and the denominator by two, we will get four sixths. And the factors for eight are a one, two, and four, and the factors for 12 are a one, two, three, four, six, and twelve, but four and six still have a two as a common factor. So this fraction is not in simplest form. They didn't choose the greatest common factor, four. They're going to have to divide again. And we can see on a fraction wall, here we have eight twelfths. There's eight of them. Here we have four one-sixth pieces, and here we have two one-third pieces. We can look at their lengths and see they're equivalent. We can take a ruler or pencil and line them up here and see that these are all equivalent to each other because they're all the same length. But 
The fraction in the simplest form will have the fewer parts, so that would be two one-third pieces, or two-thirds. And I kept saying in third grade math to memorize your multiplication facts. If we have the basic multiplication facts memorized, we'll go faster because we'll know our factors, we'll know our products. We'll find the greatest common factor quicker. And if the student had divided by the greatest common factor, the factor that's the largest that they have in common is the 4, they would have divided the numerator and denominator by 4, and they would have gotten 2 thirds. We can check it to see if it's in its simplest form. We write the factors for 2, which is a 1 and a 2, because 1 times 2. And the factors for 3 would be a 1 and a 3, because of 1 times 3. And the only factor they have in common is a 1, so 2 thirds is in its simplest form, because the only common factor for 2 and 3 is 1. So here we have a fraction 4 twelfths. We can write it in a simpler form as 2 6, but in its simplest form it would be 1 third. Here we have 4 twelfths on our fraction wall. Here we have 2 6 on our fraction wall. And in simplest form we have 1 third because we can see if we line these all up, they're the same length, aren't they? See that? And they're equivalent fractions. The higher we go on this fraction wall, the simpler the fraction becomes because it will have less equal parts. Here's 4 twelfths, here's 2 sixths, and here's 1 third. That's only got one part, so it's in its simplest form. And I've said in the last few videos, the fraction bar is we can refer to it as a fraction bar or a vinculum. We need to write it horizontally like this to make the fractions easier to add, subtract, multiply, or divide. If you try to be fancy and write it on a slant like this, it's going to get too confusing when you need to multiply, divide, add, or subtract. Okay, So try to write it with a horizontal bar. It'll help you going all the way through high school and through algebra. So, to review what we've seen so far, to write a fraction in its simplest form, the first thing we do is list all the factors for the numerator. So we have 8 16th. We list all the factors for 8, which is 1 times 8, 2 times 4. Then we list all the factors for the denominator. All the factors for 16 are 1 times 16, 2 times 8, and 4 times 4. We identify the greatest factor they have in common. That would be the 8. We divide both the numerator and denominator by that greatest common factor. 8 divided by 8 is equal to 1. 16 divided by 8 is equal to 2. 8 sixteenths is equal to 1 half. Three friends shared a pizza. Emma got 4 twelfths, Tala got 3 ninths, and Sophia got 1 third. Did each friend get an equal share of the pizza? We write the fraction 4 twelfths, and we write the factors for the 4 and the factors for the 12. And we find the greatest factor they have in common. Well, that's a 4. So we're going to divide the numerator and denominator by that same number 4. 4 divided by 4 is 1. 12 divided by 4 is 3. That's 1 third. And we do 3 ninths. And the factors for 3 are a 1 and a 3 for 1 times 3. And the factors for 9 are a 1, a 3, and a 9. The greatest factor they have in common is the 3. So we divide the numerator and denominator both by 3. 3 divided by 3 is equal to 1. 9 divided by 3 is equal to 3. That's equal to 1 third. And we know Sophia got 1 third. And because this is a unit fraction with 1 as a numerator, it is in its simplest form. So yes, each friend got one-third of the pizza. They did each get an equal share. Because Emma's was four-twelfths, that means her slices were very, very tiny. And Tala's were medium-sized because it was ninths. And Sophia had the largest slice of one-third. She had one big 
slice that was one-third of the pizza. Sophia made 12 bracelets. Five were pink, four bracelets were purple, the rest were blue. In simplest form, what fraction of the bracelets were blue? So we think, well, five were pink and four were purple. That's nine that were pink and purple. That's 12 in all minus the nine pink and purple ones. That leaves three to be blue. Three of the 12 bracelets were blue. That's three of 12, three twelfths were blue. We write the factors for three, that would be one times three. We write the factors for 12, that's one times 12, two times six, three times four. We look for the greatest factor they have in common, that's a three, and we divide three by three and get a one, and 12 divided by three is equal to four. So we know one fourth were blue and it's in its simplest form. It's a unit fraction, so we know it's in its simplest form. And the only factor that a one and a four have in common is a one. So it is in simplest form. In our next lesson, we're gonna learn how to write a pair of fractions with common denominators. That's lesson 6.4. Stay strong, have a wonderful day, and I'll see you next time. Bye.